Um, but I can't, I can't figure out what the range, like, I think, I, do I have to plug it back in for the range of the equality? No, the range here is a known thing. It's, it's, it's based on the fact that it, it increases forever and starts at zero. So it's Y greater than zero. That's what, that's just it? That's it. It's not greater than equal, it's Y greater than zero. Uh, this is a, unless there's a, a horizontal asymptote. That, there was a Y intercept. That's okay. The the, oh. the range is the minimum Y value to the maximum Y value. Okay. No, that was right. Do you, do you have a, an idea of what the graph looks like of this? Not yet. No. Okay. Because you guys didn't really touch on this. It It is an increasing function. Uh, basically, as, as X gets large, so does Y. Y gets really, really big. Like imagine four squared, four cubed, four to the fourth. Those numbers are getting bigger and bigger. Yeah, so then it'd be infinity. infinity like so as X reaches positive infinity, Y would approach positive infinity. Yeah. And which of the following? So we really needed that first. So the, it's the bottom left graph. And, and that will help to confirm the domain and range for you. The domain is everything, but the Y, you yeah. can see it approaches zero, but never hits zero. And it goes yep. up forever. Okay. And for that one, you would it would have been between C and D, and D is is going negative. It's, D, it's DK. It's a DK one. Yeah. So then the only logical choice would have been um, C. Now, now the reason it's growth is that four inside parentheses. The four yeah, is bigger it's, than it's positive. At more than that, it's it's bigger than one because like one half would be decay. Oh. But uh, here we go. This is another one. So that number inside parentheses is bigger than one. So then it'd be an exponential growth. Yes. Okay. Growth. And then what is the rate of growth? 1.9. So the, the the rate of growth is is um, not that number. It's it's you take the number and subtract one from oh, it if it's growth, and if it's and if it's decay, you subtract it from one. Yeah. So it'd be zero point nine. Yes. Are you taking notes on this stuff for Miss Six? Do you remember it? I know he can hear me. Are you taking notes on this stuff? I know what I'm missing, yes. If, if you need me to share my screen, I'm happy to do that. I mean, some of these are are more verbal uh, than. Yeah. yeah. So so because that number, I think I think what mom's looking for here is is like you want to write down something that since that number is less than less than one. Yeah, since it's, it's less decay. than one, it'd be a decay. Yes. And I think it's yes. concerned that, you know, whether that will be remembered between now and the final. Yeah. So that this time you subtract that number from one. It'd still be the same though, regardless because yes. it's half. Unless you subtracted one from that. But they'd be 0 0.5 for the decay. That's that's correct. Decreasing in a year, so the three percent, so then to be y equals, um, j um, I think it would be zero point zero three. You subtract the percent from one. So it'd be oh, one it'd be zero point nine seven two to the power of x. Now you've got an extra y equals in there. There's already a y equals on the left. Oh. Yep. But yes, that is uh that is correct. It's the initial quantity times the growth. Yep. To the power of it. Okay. Three hundred times point nine seven to the x. After seven years, and so then x equals seven. That's right. 
putting nine seven in for times nine that do you expect it to be bigger or smaller than the original mm, smaller yes 300 times 0 0.97 to the oops, 300 times 0.97 to the seventh is around 200, around 242. So before you go on, did you write something down for that? Did you write the equation with the number in it? Yep. I mean, you can essentially write down what's there as your answer. Yeah, I have something. a whole page okay. of notes for stuff like yeah. this. Yep. Okay. And then 37 okay. cows that are free range for, so then growth rate of 17, so it'd be 1.17. That's correct. So, Y equals 150 times 1.17 to the X, but then it wants Y equals 150 times 1.17 to the six. And That's then right. Y is equal to 50 times 1.17 to the power of six. And then I got, would it be 384 because it would round up to 385, but you can't you don't, add you, more, it's, so it would be 384, right? It's just conventional rounding, so don't, uh, there, there's no, like, it, it. Oh, so it would be 385? I don't know. Um, it, I don't know why it doesn't say what to round to. That's. It was 385, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. So, so for, for the problem like this, one, this is so this is divided by negative three divided by negative three. This is. But does it work for? Hang on, before you hit. Okay, does it work for all of them? What? Does it work for all of them? No. No, it does not, and that's what you got to be careful. Of. It's got to work for all of them. I mean, that's actually a yeah. tricky question because it works for the first three terms, but then after that, no. Could be neither. Yeah. Yeah. What would that last term have to be to make it geometric? One. Yes. Okay. Let's take a general expression for the nth term of the sequence. So T of N is growing by there's a formula for geometric sequences. So it's times seven each time. Okay, and that's so that's the number that goes in parentheses. In parentheses. Yeah, so it sounds like you haven't really studied geometric sequence formulas. So is it T of N equals, is it the same thing as what we did with the? It, it is, it's the first, it's the first term, which is negative one. So be, yeah, so then T, of n equals negative one times uh n b so you're you're seven what it's going what's going by seven but it's to the power of of n minus one instead oh, of, i remember learning about this i hated memorizing these formulas yeah so i've got it down i know you can't see my screen but it's i've got it down here for you in case you want to look at that later yeah, um, I probably will. So this is what I have. It should be an exponent. There yes. it is. Yes, That's what that I works. have. That works. And you can always test it. You can put one in for n, two in for n, three in for n. And that's what they actually have you do here. Now, in terms of how you do this, you're just using the pattern. You're multiplying by seven each time. You can yep. use the formula or you can just sit there and keep multiplying by seven. Yeah, I'm just going to keep multiplying by seven. That's the way easier way.
Okay. Oh, I forgot my negative. Here we go. Find the ninth term of the sequence. So that means n minus one. So n it becomes nine. Right. So then t of nine equals negative one times seven times n minus one. So then that's negative one times seven to the eighth is negative 576 or negative 5,764,801. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Negative this is the result. And then why is that not typing? Wait, what did I do? Why can't I press anything? Maybe go to a different problem and come back, or I like won't let me press anything. Maybe it's just just hanging. You might have to reset the refresh the page. Yeah, I'll refresh it. Why is my keyboard not working either? I am not sure. Um, if you need to exit out of the meeting to take care of this. Please do, and you can you can come back. Well. It won't let me. Okay, I should have just stopped screen sharing. That's correct. I can't see your screen anymore. Um, okay. Let me try again. Share screen. Work. See if you can see if you can do it without sharing the screen. I don't. Yeah. No. Now I can. Now I can enter things. Okay. Fantastic. There we go. That was weird. That's not right. Seven six four. Okay, good. All right, so they're trying to show you the difference between a linear and an exponential function. Yep. So then two x, and then that's zero, two, four, six, eight. And that's zero. No, no, no. Two, two, to the, two to the zero is not zero. Oh, no, two zero, to zero is, is one. one. Yes. Then two to the one is two. And that's two to two is four. Two to the three is eight. And then 16. Okay, so they want you to graph them now. I guess you got to kind of snap the the line to the points, and same with the quadratic, or I'm sorry, the growth function x. Okay, so then zero starts at zero, and both of them start at zero. Well, this one actually starts at one. G of x is always one, and then one, zero, and then, wait, this is the linear one. Yes, you gotta be, so it's, it, that is not right. It's zero, zero, and then like one, two. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna move that one there. So then this one is zero, zero, and then this is two, two. It's uh, one, two. For the linear one, it should be two, yeah. two. Oh, no, one. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so then this one needs to be zero. And then this one needs to be two or one, two. But that's the way it would grow because then at three, it's eight. Yeah, and then at four, it's 16. Okay. Yeah. Looks good. So I'll probably yeah. next ask you where they intersect. Oh, I guess not. Uh, the linear one, they they want you to figure out that it's it's increasing by the slope, like you should have there, and then a factor of two. Good. 
So they're saying which which rises more quickly, the growth function or the line after the they intersect? Yes. And then uh, you six. Gotta use the, yeah. Okay. So then I would six go, times two is twelve. Yeah, I'd go back to the original functions for those. Two and then the six. Two to the six. Two to the fourth is sixteen. So the two to the fifth is sixty-four. Yes. Uh, it increases an increasingly exponential function. That is exponential. So that's a pure definition. That might be good to write down in your notes. Yep. In, a linear function increases at a constant rate. Yep. And then exponential function increases by an increasing amount. I feel like the simple interest or in Oh, simple interest is like that. It's like that weird. Isn't it like 5.5950 5, times 2.2 to the exponent of 9? It's, it's just principal times rate times time. It's the amount you started with. So P is so 5950. PRT. Oh, so that times that times 9. Yeah, and I've got I've got the answer up also just to confirm when you do that in the calculator. Yeah, the simple interest is the important part. Yeah. It's principal times rate times time. Yeah, this is just the simple formula. It's just PRT. Part, yes. One of the PRTs. Make sure uh, you convert that decimal to I'm sorry, percent to a decimal. That's a stumbling block on some of these. Yep, because uh, I got eleven mil. I got one million. Oh, no, 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 that's way I too got. Big. I got one hundred and seventeen thousand eight hundred and ten. Again, you got to convert that percent to a decimal point. Yeah, you take so two point two five nine divide by times zero point zero two two. Yes, times nine. Um, eleven. Now it says. 000. Now it says. Per quarter for nine years. Okay, that's the issue. No, 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 that's not right. So it's, it's oh 2. yeah, because then it'd be that answer times four because there's four quarters in a year. Yeah, so that's it's really eight point eight percent per year. I got four seven one two point four. Yes, that is correct. You got around to the nearest cent four zero. Looks good. When it takes forever, it's going to tell me I'm right. Yeah. Okay. Then, then is that the only part to this one? Yep. Okay. I was going to ask for the new amount. Yeah. Then you should right, so, add that. All right. So this one is not simple interest. This is the more complicated. This is compounded. Formula. So over ten. So it's compounded quarterly. So then it's, isn't it like the decimal as the exponent? The decimal. It's uh. It's got a certain formula here. Um. Oh. I'm not probably should share at this point. Okay. Let me uh, let me do that real quick. You're gonna want to you're gonna want to uh, see this formula. So, okay, this is uh this is the big one here. You should be seeing my screen here shortly. Yeah. Um, this is the formula. It's the principal, which you started with, one. the interest rate as a decimal, n is the number of compounding periods. So because it's quarterly, n is four. He is okay. the, uh, the the number of years. Okay, so then A equals the principal, which is 7810, so 7800 yep. zero, zero, times 1 plus 0 0.31 over 4 quarters times 4. Oh, yeah, 4 times 10, because... So, a equals seven eight zero zero times zero point zero three one divided by four zero point zero three one divided by four zero point zero zero seven five. Yeah, so you, um, try to enter this into your calculator as best you can. I don't know what kind you're using, but most of the issues are doing it, entering it wrong or not doing the right order of operations. If you're yep. only able to do one at a time. Right, yeah. 
to the 40th. So then I got $10,622. So I got A equals $10,622 and one cent. That's right. Now you'll have to reshare your screen whenever you're ready, but this formula applies that uh, probably all the ones we're gonna do. Let me write one more down. Oh, that's okay. I'll write it down if we need it. And the problem. So you're sharing your whole uh, window now. You may uh, probably be better to do share uh, that just that browser window if you want to reshare that. Yeah, I did. I'm seeing your whole desktop now, which is last. It was it's more zoomed in. So you can when you hit share, you can choose to just share the the. Um, yeah, I thought that's what I pressed. Uh, just the uh, just the screen, just not, not the whole window. This one. Yes, that's better. Okay. Yes. If I make it full screen, does it make it too wide for you? Uh, yeah. Okay. It basically Let's makes see. it impossible to see. You got a, You looks like you got a nice size monitor there. Yep. So that's, that's great. Um, okay. And we're um, back to we're back to these. No more money problems. Is this really right? What is this really the right one? I mean, it's the, there are no more money problems. I guess not. Okay. Yeah, there's not too. There wasn't too many money problems. All right. Well, uh, the y-intercept is putting x equals zero into the. Yep. Yeah. So then zero four. Uh, that is correct. Yep. So it's just that leading coefficient. Yep. Yeah. Then can the function out? No, I've done. I already did a problem like this. As x approaches infinity, what does y approach infinity? This is a growth function again, so it has to go up and to the right. Yeah, it has to be up, so it'd be that one. It's also got a, yeah, that is correct, a horizontal asymptote at zero. Okay. 44 is a dot plot to answer the following questions. So you're just counting, just counting those uh, numbers there. Yeah. So one, two, three, four, six. Twenty is six plus three is nine. Thirty is nine. Forty is six. That's it. Six. And then that one is seven. Six nine nine six seven. Six nine nine six seven. How many students scored above twenty? So then So does that include the twenties? No. Does not. Fifteen twenty three. Is it not twenty? Did I do my math wrong? Yes, I did it's twenty two. You scored below 30, 15. That's correct. And how many employees are in their 30s? So the legend is important. The fact that one, two means 12. One to two is 12 years old. So is that plus 12? What? The, 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 for example, the go to the first zero there next to the two. That's a twenty-year-old. Then the, the next one to the right is a twenty-one-year-old. Then a twenty-one, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Oh, okay. So the thirties people in their thirties are gonna be in the next row. Thirty-one. Thirty-one. Thirty-three. Oh, so each one of these is a ten. Yes, and that's what the legend is. Or the key is trying to tell you. Um, so how many of those are in row three? Do you have five to the right. Yeah, five. So this is really asking for the max. Yep, and then fifty-five. Okay. The age of the youngest employee is twenty. The median age of the employees. 
am I I'm am I gonna have to write all this down or no you just have to count how many are there but they tell you it's 20 employees so you have to find the middle two oh, the 10th and the 11th so then three four five six eight nine so then 35 so you're finding the average of the 10th and the 11th oh yeah uh, because there's two of them 35 31 33 Yeah, let's go back and look at it again. Go go get the 10th score and the 11th score. You got to find the average. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it's these two numbers. It's between 34 four and, and 35. Six, That's the six, average. 34.5. There we go. Hey, what is the modal modal, modal oh, yeah Mod like 20s you got it number of minutes spent studying by a group of each students so you're supposed to decide if there's any outliers in the data anything far from it it looked pretty pretty no, decent. It looked pretty pretty close why is it asking me to show work for this well, it's me to show work for this problem. You you want it like it's almost like the stuff we're saying out loud is your work. You're supposed to say that the there's no, um, there's not a an answer that's really far away. Now, you could also make a box and whisker plot. I'm just gonna like find the mean, I guess. Okay. Sixty plus ninety five plus seventy five. Yeah, 71.43. Okay. All right, let's see what's next. Find the mean <laughs> you I, I actually did find the mean. Well, that, that's for a completely different question, though. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Negative 15 plus 4 minus 13 minus 6 minus 9 minus 17 minus 19 minus 7 minus divided by 8. Negative 10.25. That's what I got as well. Forty eight. Oops. Sort the scores in ascending order. So then so that's, the negative that's smallest one, to largest. negative one. There is a score seven. smaller than negative one. Oh, and negative seven. Yeah. Negative seven, negative one, negative one, one, nine, and then ten. And then Two five. tens. Yeah. And I don't know. It seems like you might put a comma between them. I really don't know, though. Yeah. Five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yes. Okay, there we go. Median is tools one, two, three. Is median is zero. 
Is it not zero? It's between one. There's a, how many scores are there? You just wrote it down seven. So there's an odd number of scores. So there's a middle number. The middle number is the fourth one. Oh, one. Yes. First quartile of the set of scores. So that one would be negative one. Okay, agreed. And third quartile, kind of nine, ten, ten. Draw, I'm just going to draw a box and whisper plot for this. Okay, there we go. It'd be ten. Find the IQR ten plus one is eleven. Okay. What shape of the don't do this again? Stop share. Share screen. Think about the uh, direction of the tail. That's the best way to answer answer it. Yeah, sorry, my screen was just being weird again. Uh, it is not positive. It, it yeah, depends no. what... Sorry, I can't see what I'm clicking because it's like it's not like it letting me click again. It's getting kind of share. Okay. It is negatively skewed. It's, it's, the tail is going to the left. Yeah. Left skew, negative skew. It's not letting me share anymore. I don't not know why. Interesting. But I can't like press anything. Let me go ahead and let me go ahead and share my screen. See if that helps. All okay. right, here we go. So you've got the negative skew here and uh Whenever you're ready, um, I guess tr try sharing your screen again. Okay. Yes. All right. So it is negatively skewed. Okay, good. Determine the lower quartile and the upper quartile score. This one's a little bit more difficult. You have to count the number of scores. So that yeah. and that and that first one, you've so got two, two scores. Those two. So four, seven, 17, plus seven is 24, plus eight, 32. So there's 32 scores. So the, the middle one is there's, there's 16 lower and 16 upper. So to find Q1, you have to find the eighth and the ninth score. Seven. Give me four. Lower quartile is four. Okay. Oh, the wait. upper quartile, you're going, you're going, you can think of it as going from the right side now, eight, eight yeah. and nine from the right. So that gets me, so it's six. It's like it's probably six. Yep. Hence, calculate the inner quartile range. Two. It is two. Using the inner quartile range. There's probably not outliers. <laughs> They're pretty rogue with that answer. Um, you should check, right? Like that's the whole point of this, but uh, you probably it doesn't okay. look like, That looks like if it would continue to go, it would look, but like, cause two to what, eight isn't very, that's not very. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just suggesting you might wanna, might wanna just do the uh, the calculations just to confirm it. Uh, I mean, you don't have to right now. I'm just just suggesting that. Okay. 
and from problem 50, uh, work again. Just through 60. Okay. Uh, can the departure of the flights? Okay. Percentage of the flights in April were delayed. So April delayed 43 out of 176. That's correct. 24. Oh, it wants it to a decimal place of so twenty four point. I don't know. It should four. be it. Oh, as a percentage. Okay. Why is that? That's kind of odd. All Can right. Put percent sign. There we go. No, you don't need the percent. It, oh, oh wow! It did take it. That's, yeah. All right. Fraction of the total number of flights during the next two months or was it during the next two months? So total number of flights. Basically, they're asking how many, how many were on time. Yeah, well, I gotta find the total. First, so three hundred and thirty. So then, one hundred nine plus one thirty three is divided by three thirty. Uh, seventy-three point three percent, or okay. two hundred. Well, it, it it says fraction. It says fraction, so I'm not sure you have to. I don't yeah. know what to suggest because that one does it reduce. It does. Um, you can divide the top and bottom by three. It's two forty-three divided by three. Eighty-one. It should have 81. told me. I'm not that saying this is what it wants. I'm just total guess here. And the other one is 110. Yep. Yeah, so it doesn't, what pretty much departed on time? Unbelievable. Oh, just March though. Sorry, just March. So oh, it's just in March. Okay. 109. So it's 109. Over 330. No, no, just the March. Just the March oh, total. 109 over... Plus three is 12, 142. You're 109 plus 45. It said departed on time, though. Yeah, so plus there's five. in March, the March total flights is 109 plus 45. Oh. And that's 154 on the bottom. I don't know if that reduces. Let me. I, now, what's the problem? I'm not sure. We gotta we gotta see if that reduces uh 109 divided by 150. Across all two months, so it's 109 over 330. That's I don't like the way that's worded. What fraction of the flights two months were ones that departed on time in March? Okay, yeah, you're right. You have it there. So this one looks like it's just April now. Price in April, so it's total flights in April. Oh no, it goes and it'd be so then 133 over 176 is equal to okay. I'm just gonna round to one decimal place. Yep, divided by 176 is times 100 is 75.6. Yeah, it does want the percent sign. Probability. Yay. Okay, so how many blue? So there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blue marbles. Uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight black marbles. 
and one, two, three, four, five red marbles. So then it'd be seven over 17, 20. So seven over 20. Seven divided by 20. Okay, I agree. 35%. Yep. Like you found out, you got to put the percent. Although it's weird, it says probability down there. Probabilities are usually just written as numbers between zero and one. It's going to be 12 right. out of 20, which is. Oh, divided by four, 12 out of 20. So the, like that's. So keep in mind here, you're like first drawing a blue. That's seven out of 20. And then I feel like it's a 60. Yeah, it's a 60%. I was trying to do it without a calculator. Uh, for the reds, though, you've got five out of 19. If you assume you you had a, a you did just enter it. Okay. Five out of 19. I guess you're putting it back in. I don't think that that's correct. But okay. So you have to decide whether the outcome of one affects the other. Are these events, they're independent, that they they're, don't have a correlation. Well, be careful with that. That's a different, th th think of it as one affecting the outcome of the other. Okay. Correlation's different. Things can be correlated that are unrelated. Okay, then for 53, consider the diagram. Play rugby union. One twenty-two. Don't play rugby union. Wait. What? So don't play rugby league. Oh wait. So play rugby union. Play rugby league. Fifty-one. That's the both. Yes. Don't. So play the rugby league is one twenty-two. Don't play rugby league is. 108. And then don't play both. It's 176. 51, So this one, you got to count how many are in A and divided by the total. Yep. 11 plus 13 plus 19 plus 12. 11 plus 13 plus 19 plus 12 is, oh, so then it'd be 11 divided by 55, which is one fifth, which is 20%. Does it want it in percentage? It doesn't say. I, I probably would have gone one fifth point two. Wow. Uh, um, twenty four. Maybe eleven divided by fifty. It's fifty five, though, like you said. Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry, but... No, no, I'm sorry. It's it's that. There's the issue. It's it's a it's eleven plus the thirteen. They're they're those both count. Oh, because those count as both. And so it's twenty four. Yeah. Out of. 24 out of 55. Yep, that's the right answer. P of B is thir 19 plus 13. Okay. Which is 32 over 55. And P not A, so that's 13 plus 19 plus 12. Everything not in A, 31. So then that's... 32 plus 12, 32 plus 12 is 44. No, 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 no. It's, it, 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 a, includes, a includes the 13. It's It can't be in A, oh. so it's just the 19 and 12. So it'd be 31. There, there's also this, the A and not A add up to one. So if you take your answer from part A and subtract it from one, you get 31 out of 55. Yeah. So to ask for not B, you can not take B. one minus so 32. Have... It'd be 23. Okay. B only. So just B, so nothing else. Yeah.
the game properly, rolling a double. If you will say probably a double six. So there's six steps to the one out of six times one out of over six equals one in thirty six. That is right. Double three is still one out of thirty six. Yep. I don't know what any double is. That's one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five, six, six. Yeah. So how many how many of those are there? How many doubles are there? So there could be six doubles. Out of 36. Yeah, so then that'd be one divided by six. Okay. Two doubles in a row. So it's the probability of one double, which we so just got be, so times the second twelve. Double. No, you're multiplying. One six times one six. Oh, one out of thirty. One out of thirty-six again. Yes. All right. Nice, ninety-five percent. Okay, good timing because we are we are all done for uh, for today. So we got another lesson uh, for tomorrow. Um, 